Cooling Water and Filtration, presented by me, Chris Amio, Southeast Regional Manager with PureFlux Corporation. Today's topic, filtration applications, configurations for HVAC cooling towers. So what we're gonna show you today are, are the different ways you can install filtration on your cooling tower. Even though we have filtration options for the chilled water, i.e. the closed loop, today we're focused only on the cooling tower. This is a short video that's meant to provide a visual of the effects of solids building up over time in your cooling tower. Cooling towers have an inherent side effect of being the world's best air scrubber. Air is being used to cool the heated water via evaporation. As air is drawn into the cooling tower, particulate is washed from the air by the water cascading over the fill, leaving the solids behind to settle in the sump as air exits the tower. Solids that don't settle in the sump are distributed throughout your condenser system and settle in low velocity areas. System fouling then occurs, leading to higher operating costs, increased maintenance and downtime, and decreased system efficiency. For these reasons, this is why we turn to particle filtration. Also the reasons why companies and organizations like you see here recommend condenser system filtration. They know the benefits. Installing filtration optimizes energy efficiency, reduces maintenance, prolongs equipment life, and decreases chemical consumption. Okay, so let's put a filter system on your tower. First way we can do it is your typical side stream. Here we have a filter system with sweeper nozzles in the cooling tower basin. The rule of thumb for sizing for sweepers is one GPM per square foot of basin area. Now keep in mind, this is a rule of thumb. Sometimes close enough is good enough, but using this as a guide, if we have a 12 by 24 basin, we're gonna require around 288 gallons a minute of sweeping. So dirty water is brought to the filter and filtered clean water is sent back to the basin via the nozzles. To give you an idea of what this looks like, here's your tower. Looking down at the sump, you can see the header pipe with the sweeper nozzles attached. So as clean water comes back to the system, it is coming out through the end of each nozzle. And you'll see that as that happens, not only are you getting water out, but you're also getting water induced behind. Now, in my experience, you know, that nozzle will give you a good five feet of throw. So by keeping the basin stirred up, we're reducing those low velocity areas where stuff could settle. And we're also keeping the lighter stuff in suspension so that it eventually gets picked up by that filter system. So that's side stream. Now we can look at slipstream. No sweeper nozzles. We're just pulling off of the main circulating loop, running it through a filter system, and sending clean water downstream. Here, the rule of thumb for sizing is 24 system volume turnovers per day. So if we know that system volume, we want that filter to see it 24 times a day. This is why your commercial swimming pools have guidelines that say, hey, you must turn this body of water over X amount of times a day to keep up with the dirt load, okay? But a lot of times we don't know the system volume, so we look at a percentage of the circulating rate. And I've seen this being that we're dealing with rules of thumb, I've seen this percentage all over the place. I've seen it as low as 2%, I've seen it as high as 25%. So what I always do is let common sense dictate the percentage. Where's my tower? Am I 30 stories high or am I ground level next to a dirt road with trucks driving by every 10 minutes? That may dictate my percentage. It may even bring me to my third scenario, full flow, where we're filtering 100% of the circulating rate. Here, there are a couple things you've got to consider. Number one, footprint. Higher flows generally mean bigger filter systems. Also pressure drop. Now you have something in line. What's the pressure drop through that filter system? This is where I really like centrifugal separators. They have a good footprint 
for the GPM, and they also have a relatively low pressure drop. Also, the solids are purged automatically. It's not like you have a bag or cartridge filter that somebody needs to go change the bags and the pressure drops real high. And if they don't change the bags, now you have a plug. Um, good application for uh, centrifugal separators. So you have side stream, slip stream, full stream. Which one is right for you? Give me a call. Let's talk about your particular application. Or if you have any questions about anything you've seen here today, don't hesitate. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. We're here to help. Thank you so much.